I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will learn a technique to integrate by parts. I have taken two simple examples mainly to explore and understand the technique. So in these examples one of them is x e to the power of dx and the other one we need to find integral of x sin 3x dx. What you notice here is that we have product of two functions in both the cases, right? So when you have product of functions, you can actually apply integration by parts. The formula which helps us to find the integral is given right there. So the strategy here is to split the product in two portions. One of them we call u, the other one dv. That means one part is one which we find derivative of, the other one we find integral of. And then if we do that, we can simplify the given integral in the form product of those two minus integral of v du. So the whole idea is starting from one point, we get to another integral, which is hopefully simpler to solve, right? If it is not simpler to solve, then that means the method should not be used or has not been used properly, correct? So that's the key to understand. So let's begin and then we'll solve and then we'll further discuss. Let me take the first example, which is we want to find integral of x e to the power of x dx, right? That is what we want to find. Now in this, I will take one of my function as, as u. Let's say x I'm taking as, as u, right? And this portion, which is x d of x, will take as dv. So I'll write here u equals to x and dv equals to e to the power of x dx. Now if I differentiate this part, I get du dx, right? I get du dx. If I integrate this part, then I get v e to the power of s. The integral of e is e to the power of x, right? So if I integrate, I get this. Now, let me apply this formula to find the result. So we are saying that the integral of this should be equal to u dv. That means we have to do product of u and u and v. So that is this u and v. So that is the first part u and v. So the product of x and e to the power of x. Right. So we get x e to the power of x minus integral of v du v du. Do you see that? Minus integral of v du. So in our case v is e to the power of x and du is dx dx. Do you see that? So that is how you have to apply the formula. So once you apply what you notice is that this product of function x e to the power of x has been now reduced to a simpler integral. So we have x e to the power of x minus integral of e to the power of dx, which is much, much simpler, correct? And so now we can find the integral of this function and the result will be x e to the power of x minus e to the power of x, correct? So that is how you can find the integral, right, plus c. So that's how the formula is to be applied. Now let me take another example just to show you the technique. Right? These are very simple examples basically to understand the technique, right? So we have x sine 3x dx. So as we did earlier, we'll split it into two functions, right? These are my two functions where I'm saying u is equal to x and dv is equals to sine 3x dx. So if I differentiate this, I get du equals to dx. And if I integrate this, I'll get v, right? That's the whole idea. So we get v equals to integration of sine is minus cos 
3x divided by 3 okay so that becomes v for us now if we apply the formula to find integral of this using the formula for integration by parts what we get is product of u and v so product of u and v is right there product of u and v that means x times this we could write this as minus x over 3 cos 3x right so this is the product of u and v minus integral of v dv so v dv means integral of this v du i'm sorry so v du so that is the integral since this is minus i'll make this positive because this is minus and what we get here is cos 3x over 3 dx do you see that now this is much simpler integral than the product which we started with correct so we can now find the integral of this and write down our answer so which will be minus one third of x cos 3x and integral of cos is sine so we get plus over 1 over 3 so let me write this as 1 over 9 sine 3x plus c right so so that is how you could integrate using parts now now the question here is i just took the first function as u the other one as the integral part but the rule which helps you to select you know it may not be so simple at times so we have an acronym for this l i a d e where this could be interchange so normally what we do is we select the part to be differentiated so that we get simpler derivatives right now you know for exponential functions and for trigonometric functions we have same derivatives so there is no point taking them on the derivative part right on the other hand we have functions like logarithms so l is for logarithms so we have logarithms i is for inverse functions right a is for algebra t is for trig functions and e is for exponential functions now what you notice is the derivative of trig and exponential functions are of same difficulty level i mean they don't really change e to the power of x derivatives e to the power of x however if you take up these functions logarithmic functions for example derivatives is much simpler so the idea is to choose a function to simplify the integral part and therefore the selection should be made giving priority for derivatives this is for selecting u so selecting u is from left to right so use the functions which get simplified on finding derivatives as u right that's that's the whole idea so that we land up in a simpler form to integrate right but i hope this video gives you a good technique of how to select and then how to write down the answer using integration of parts right I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe to my videos. We'll actually consider three types of examples. One, straightforward as you've seen here. Then we could have examples where this process of integration may be repeated. So you could have operation where we may have to have repeat integration, right? That is possible. There could be cases where you may have to simplify and then integrate. then integrate now so in the coming videos you should look into the examples where these things are repeated for example if I have sine to the power of n x it just gets repeated so we have a reduction formula for that which you should look for and then algebraic expressions could sometimes be reduced before doing the integral part so these are a few more things which you should consider while uh, being on this topic. I'm Anil Kumar and I hope that helps. Thank you 
and all the best.